So I've decided to refund the RE27 that I was unboxing in the last video. And that is because when I was actually editing that video, I was listening back to the sound quality and I just really wasn't sold. There was something about it and the only words I can describe in my mind at the moment was that it was just too harsh. Before I send it back though, I figured I'd retest it and be a bit more specific and thorough because the last video was actually just an unboxing video. But I potentially may have just overcooked the audio. But either way, I'm going to refund it for a separate reason which I'll get to at the very end of the video. So first off, there's a few testers I wanted to crack on with. Just to walk you through how I'm going to do the test is that I've got my Brocaster Pro 2 here. I'm talking currently into the short SM7B which is into channel 1. The audio set here is actually the Shure SM7B profile at 55 dB with processing turned off. And channel two is gonna be the Electro Voice RE20. It defaults to 51 dB with the processing turned off. And on channel three, I'm actually gonna set it to the dynamic microphone just because there isn't actually a, a preset for the RE27. I'm gonna set it to 46 dB just because that in my previous test that I've done, I found that it was probably around about five dB less than the RE20. I'm gonna turn the processing off and now I'm gonna bring the other microphones in. Now, like I said, in my previous video, one of the criticisms I had was the sound was so sharp. And when I watched the review from the podcast stage, he actually mentioned that he also feels the same and he prefers the sound of the RE20. He criticized this microphone just basically saying that he finds the sound out of the box a bit too harsh and that he would always have to have the high cut filter on there. So for that reason, I'm now gonna switch that on to see if that helps the sound. Because in my video, in my audio checks in the last video, the sound was incredibly sharp and it was just so rough and I just really did not like the sound of it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually gonna turn on the high cut filter just to see if that actually helps. Because in my last video, it was just so rough in my ears and I just really did not enjoy the sound at all. So I've now turned on the high cut filter and you tell me now if you feel like it's gonna actually improve the sound quality at all. When I checked before I started recording this video, I did actually hear a sound difference and turning on that filter actually then makes this microphone sound a bit more like the RE20. So with that being said, it does improve the sound quality, but I've got the RE20, so why am I gonna buy a more expensive microphone to then make it sound like this? Because I actually prefer the sound of the RE20. So I actually will be moving forward with the RE20 and be sending this back. As before, I mentioned that I will be sending this back for a couple of reasons. I'll get to the other reasons shortly, but that's actually one of the key reasons of why I didn't get on with this microphone because out of the box, it just sounds so rough. But that is just one of the reasons why I won't be buying and keeping the RE27, just because out of the box, it just sounds so much more rough. And I just don't know what the use case scenario is for that type of sound. It was suggested that if you turn on the high cut filter and then you talk right up against it. So actually, let me bring the microphones closer together. And now if you were to talk right up against it, this is apparently supposed to give like a really smooth sound. I'm a little bit conscious that it's gonna be very sensitive to the plosives and sibilants in my voice, because I'm speaking very closely to the microphone right on top of it. In the podcast stages video, he actually mentioned that he prefers his sound because it actually comes out very smooth. I actually haven't done this test yet. This is the first time I'm doing it, so you're hearing it, you know, you kind of like hearing it as I'm doing it for the first time. I will hear back in the editing side of things how this sounds. I suspect it's picking up a lot of sibilance, breath, and plosives. So I'm just moving the microphones away to more reasonable distance to how I would actually use the microphones. And I'm gonna run those tests again, but I'm also now gonna turn on processing to the Podcast Studio preset on the Rodecaster Pro 2. So as you can see, I've just changed the setting back to Podcast Studio, which is typically where I'll probably have it. I can see it's taking the sensitivity down in the sense that it's not picking up my breathing as much, which is a good thing because that was one of the things that I was criticizing this microphone in the past for, but that is also because I was probably using it incorrectly and not having any processing on done at all. So just to put the microphones back close to my mouth, just to sort of see how this sounds now, wondering how the sibilance is coming out. Let's do some plosives test. That's Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. I didn't actually do this plosives test without the presets off. So I'm gonna turn that back off just real quick now. Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Doing the test now on the broadcast preset. That's please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Peter Piper pitched a podcast. Now, as I said before on other videos, is that I actually am mostly just interested in the RE20 and the short SM7B. 
I'm doing these videos just kind of like building up to my sort of like content creation setup, but I'm kind of just testing it all out before I actually finalize what I'm going to land on. So I probably shouldn't have bought this microphone. I just became sort of like a bit sort of um, curious because I watched the WaveForward podcast and MKBHD uses this microphone. And when you are watching someone who has access to anything he wants in terms of like audio and visual equipment and he chooses the RE27, it does make you wonder is this a good microphone? And in the comparisons that I've seen him do against a short SM7B, it sounds incredible. But for me, under my test that I've found so far, I don't like the sound of it. There's a couple of things to consider though, that when I listened to it in the past, there was no processes done whatsoever. In addition, I don't know how to process audio just yet. I'm just trying to find a good microphone that comes out the box sounding naturally. So with no processing, what's the best sort of starting point that I'm finding? Equally, I've seen another video where he criticized the microphone for sounding too rough out the box. So he actually has to include the high cut filter on there. In the previous video, I didn't enable, but is now enabled in this video. But as before, I think just turning on that filter just makes this microphone sound more like this one. So I just don't see the point. Now, finally, I'm actually gonna now talk you through about why exactly I'm gonna be refunding this microphone microphone. And as I do that, I'm going to put this back to the flat response. So now I have both EV RE20 and RE27 on the flat response. I've got processing to the broadcast preset on the dynamic microphone for the RE27, but I've got it on the RE20 preset broadcast settings for the RE20 because there is an RE20 preset here. Now, the reason why I'm actually refunding this microphone, uh, if you saw the unboxing video, I did talk about how it was grade A, it was supposed to be in good condition and so forth. There's a lot of signs of use on those sides of the body. I didn't actually find that the packaging was actually in the best because when I actually look back at the footage, I realized that the bottom of the microphone was actually kind of like up against the side of the wall of the box, which there was no padding. So if this box was being thrown around, which we probably would have been during the transportation with the courier, it's probably knocking quite a lot here. And at the same time, I wasn't really impressed with the sound quality. So it kind of kept like bugging me in my mind thinking like, is this a damaged microphone? Is there something wrong with it? And that was already playing in my head for those reasons, the way it was packaged and the way it sounds. But then I was watching the Waveform podcast with MKBHD and I was looking at his microphone that he was recording into. And then I realized my microphone looks different to his. And that's not because in the later episodes he's been given a gifted one where it's been um, colored from colorway. It's actually because you can see it here from this angle this grill is not aligned. This is twisted a bit more over. And now for the remainder of the video, I'm just gonna speak into the RE20. I'm just gonna take this microphone off the stand. So if you see here, the grills on the body, it's not aligned to the grill on the top. It's twisted, just showing it to the overhead camera. And that for my OCD reasons alone would bug the hell out of me. But also what I can't help but feel like as well is that someone somewhere down the line has taken this off for whatever reason, whether it would be a faulty microphone and then they took this off to fix it or ever, even just to service it. Because I did actually hear that a lot of dust can collect through these vents. So over time, apparently you do need to clean it out. But I don't actually have a screwdriver or anything that would actually fit that. So a part of me was tempted to actually just sort of like correct it and actually just reattach it into the correct position. But at the same time, I wasn't impressed with the sound quality. So I think for those reasons, I'm just gonna let it go, send it back, get my money back and request a refund. I said, I was just talking to this one, but you know, I may as well just put it back. When I have watched other people's comparison videos, there is a difference when it comes to the sound quality, i.e. this being slightly brighter, but same time, the, the difference from what I can hear with my own sound quality and audio samples, the difference is huge. So I think that's gonna wrap up the test for me for today. As before, this is being sent back. I've already contacted the seller on eBay. He hasn't responded to me just yet, but according to his listing, there's a two week period where I can actually just change my mind if I wanted to. But same time, I am just changing my mind, but equally I'm also changing my mind because I also suspect this may have a fault with it. And I'm just not comfortable with the fact that this has been messed around with. So I've actually just finished editing the video you just saw, but I figured I'd follow up and add this clip on the end of it, just because whilst I was editing the video, my opinion on the sound quality slightly changed somewhat. And that is because when I did the last comparison test, I had it no processing set on either microphone and both on a flat profile. So out of the box, the RE27 doesn't sound good at all to me. But then when I actually turned on the high cut and then I actually added some processing on there, I actually really started to prefer the sound quality of this. And then it kind of got me thinking, I might've been looking at the wrong way around because typically speaking, when I've been doing my audio tests, I've been seeing how good they sound straight out the box. No processing set, just doing a side-by-side -side AB comparison between the audios and 
finding out which I prefer. But with the RE27, it might be a slightly different approach. It's characterized as having a brighter sound on the audio. And maybe this brighter audio is actually needed. It's needed to raise that element to pull the details out of my voice. And then when I go through the processes, I can bring some of that back down and then it's captured more detail because I, had, I did actually find in my last test that you would have just seen, in fact. The IRE 20 does sound more richer, smoother and fuller on the low end, but on the high end, you actually hear so much more detail coming out through the IRE 27. So my opinion on this microphone has slightly switched somewhat. This is the flagship microphone at the end of the day for Electro Voice and maybe that's the problem is that it's too advanced for me. It may be at that point where it's higher up and I just need to work with it better. There's a couple other things that I'm changing with the way I'm using it as well. As you can see, I'm using it much closer to my mouth. I'm speaking directly into it. I've got the high cut filter run now and I've got some processing set on. So my processing at the moment is on the dynamic microphone on the broadcast setting. I'm just going to switch it over to podcast studio. And now I don't know how much that has impacted the sound of my voice. But equally right now, I'm actually starting to reconsider my decision on refunding the microphone. I might actually decide to keep it. And if I do keep it, I need to find a screw so then I can actually realign the grill because that is actually really bugging me. Just for the final test, I'm going to switch over to the neutral preset. And now again, I can't actually remember how much is impacting my voice as I'm speaking, going through these different presets, nor do I know exactly what they're doing because on the Rodecaster Pro 2, they've just got it set as depth, sparkle and punch. You can actually do some manual EQ on that, but that's on the advanced settings, which I'm not quite there yet. I will be going through that. Once I've landed on my one or two microphones that I'm gonna be keeping long-term, I'm actually then gonna start going into like the whole journey of learning how to edit audio. I'm just gonna switch this back to the broadcast because that's kind of like where I felt I liked it the most on my last test. So as much as I did like the sound quality coming out of it, I don't like having to use the microphone like this. I don't like it so much in my face. So that is one of the considerations I'm going with in terms of like when I decide what microphone I'm gonna land on. And I might actually find that using the RE20 might suit me better, but then brightening up the audio in post. Also just wanted to say that coming from a photography videography background, I haven't really ventured into audio as much and this is me going along my journey and just kind of documenting on the way. And I just didn't realize how many nuances there is to all of this. It will be interesting to see like when I go back and actually watch all these old videos to see where I started, what my opinions were and how they developed over time. But right now, I'm actually starting to think this RE27 is not a bad shout. I haven't heard back yet from the eBay. I might just mention to them, I'll just say to them that if you just hold five for just a little bit more, I just need to do a little bit more testing to make sure it's not a faulty unit and so forth. Because I still really wasn't happy with how it was packaged, but it is what it is now. It is here. It is working to an extent. I just don't know if any damage is done to affect the quality in any way. But I have heard these dynamic microphones are actually quite durable in general, though, not necessarily this EV RE27 specifically. But I'm just going to close it off here. So you let me know what you think of the audio quality. And if you think these adjustments that I've made in terms of how I'm using it has actually helped.